Alexei Radmansky is here. In January 2004, he was appointed artistic director of the Bolshoi Ballet in Moscow. At 36, he is one of the youngest to ever hold that position in the Bolshoi's 229-year history. He is currently leading the Bolshoi on its international tour. The company will be performing at the Metropolitan Opera in New York through July 30th. And here is a look at the Pharaoh's Daughter, one of four shows they will be performing. <laughs> I'm pleased to welcome Alexei Radmansky to this table, for obviously for the first time. Welcome. Cool. Welcome. Um, you actually performed at the Kiev Ballet in an well, early year? Well, I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, we think of these two as rivals. Are they rivals? You mean Kirov? Yes. Kirov is uh, St. Petersburg. And uh, if you look back before the revolution, it was two. Uh, imperial theaters and Moscow was always been uh, has always been the second after the Mariinsky theater yeah. and it has changed after the revolution when the capital was moved from St. Petersburg to Moscow and there is still a sense of uh, uh, competition yeah you're right mm -hmm. and one day are there ups and downs for them in terms of who's artistic director and and what the leading dances are of course of course yeah and where does that competition stand today well, it's hard for me to describe yeah. the, the actual situation now because I'm on this side, yes. on the Bolshoi side. But uh, we have, the styles are very different. It's, it represents two sides of the Russian ballet school. And if you think of two cities, St. Petersburg is the, um, it was created at once by Peter the Great and it's ideal city, it's uh, uh, harmonious, it's very pure, the lines, the architecture, and Moscow is more spontaneous, it grew, it, it grew by itself, you know, naturally. Mm -hmm. And so it can be said about the styles of dancing, because the, the St. Petersburg style is cooler, it's more academic, it's classicism in its highest level, mm -hmm. and the Bolshoi is more spontaneous, more emotional, more uh, crowd-pleasing, I would say. And is that where your heart is? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what have you brought to it? What are you trying to do with the Bolshoi? Well, the best thing about the Bolshoi is that Bolshoi style is unique, it's special. It's different from the Kiro, from Paris Opera, from American companies. And I think m my main goal is to preserve it and uh, maybe to correct it a little bit so it doesn't become a cliche, a, yeah. a thing that is repeated over and over again, you know. Uh, we have to, we keep the tradition, we, we perform the classics and the big Soviet ballets that were done before, but the new additions to the repertoire, we have to find things that would develop the style, but keep it in the same direction, in the direction of, of this line. Let me take a look. This is, this, uh, is a clip from the Pharaoh's Daughter. You saw a bit of it earlier, but here is another clip. Take a look at this. What is it about um, ballet that attracted you as a young man? Well, I really started making ballet classes when I was 10 years old. And you don't have a clear idea of what, what you want to do when you're 10 years old. But uh, I think what, what is beautiful about the ballet is that uh, you can express something that is beyond the words. Uh, we do storied ballets, 
you can follow the story and we do abstract ballets also where there is no story but it communicates directly to the audience and you don't need to speak the language to understand what's happening. And the connection with the music, I think, to express something through the movement in connection with the music, it's a beautiful thing. It is said, it yeah. is written, that was it Yuri Grigorovic, who was an artistic director of the Bolshoi, right. denied you a role and that you think you're better off because of that. Of course, I was a bit upset when I graduated, but it was such a high level of the, the company. It was a company of the gods, really. Yeah. We had, you know, how many genius dancers you can have in a company. But we had Vasiliev, Plisetsky, Maxima, Oliyep, Bismertin, Olavrovsky at the same time, these biggest names, you know. It was a really golden age of the company. And Grigorovich staged his best ballets for these dancers. Well, then Grigorovich left in. Uh, 1995 and the dancers retired and it was really not clear where to go now because just to repeat the ballets and the roles that were created on the other dancers uh, it was not how the theater moves front um, so who's had the most influence on you among choreographers uh, when I first saw Balanchine Ballets, I think that was... Uh, George Balanchine. George Balanchine, yeah. Because, you know, during the Soviet era, New York City Ballet came to Russia a few times, two times, I think, in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. But the, his ballets yeah. were not performed by any Russian company. Uh, and so we, you had to wait until ABT came to Moscow? Uh, well, we, after, when Perestroika came, a yeah. lot of tapes came. And we, we saw these tapes, and we understood that ballet can go different. And when different you saw ways. those tapes, what did it do? What, well, what it's just different. Did it, make? it was just different system and classical system that we didn't know. Yeah. So uh, that was very uh, big influence on me. Then I went to went to the West, to Canada, to yeah. work, to Denmark, to work, and to learn different styles. But um, I think Russian style, uh, how it it was. Uh, it was created by foreigners, by French people, by Italian people, uh, and then it developed into something that we know as a Russian mm -hmm. style of, of dancing. How has the change, I mean, you, you know, we all know about Niryev and <coughs> Barishnikov and others. Mm -hmm. uh, how has the uh, fall, collapse of the Soviet Union changed the culture of Russia in terms of, of dance? and music and opera? Well, the, the country has changed and the people has changed. And so freedom, the opportunity to create and the opportunity not to be Well, censored. much more freedom, yeah, you're right. No censorship. But, but I, I'm, that's the reality. How is it affected? I mean, are, are there, is there an explosion of work? Is there an explosion of creativity? Is there an explosion of... Not really, not really. Many people left, you know, to the West. Um, During the Soviet Union period? No, right after. Oh, right after? Right after, yeah. Because they could? Because they could. They wanted, they wanted to experience the Western life, the Western uh, work, uh, different companies and all that. But um, the ballet is still very, very popular. It's still government supported. And it's still something that is proud of, of Russian nation, I think, especially the Bolshoi. It's a name that is very dear to whole Russia. Oh, uh, to the world, I mean, I think, in terms of its contribution to dance, don't you? Well, yeah, it's, it's a very famous name. And our very difficult goal is to, to try to be up to it because it has great history, great mm -hmm. traditions. Would you continue to live in Moscow or you, might you, you know, spend some time in the West or spend some time in... France, or spend some time in Denmark, or spend some time. In I, d I did already. I, w I, I lived in Canada. I lived in Denmark yeah. and in Ukraine. So it's uh, now I am concentrated with the Bolshoi, of course, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's a challenge. It's a great company to work with. Thank you for coming. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.